Hi, I'm the Scrub, and you're here for one reason. I don't know why you got a special compass to track down this thing. I can see it at certain times in the far north of the Sea of Clouds. Anyway, gonna tackle this cursed vessel with the 23 others who have this as their rule left for the day. The ghost ship where no adventurer has lived to tell the tale. At this point, we're just playing Sea of Thieves. I'll wait for another crew to come along, spam us with all sorts of slurs and bomb us out of the water. Time to learn about the Void Arc. Simplified. Head forward and three birds will spawn in. Kill everything and head around the corner through the opening. Turn left and three griffins will spawn in. Kill everything and head through the wind tunnel. You'll be blown down the shaft so you can continue through the raid. Follow the rubble up the platform where a few sharks will spawn in. A wispy blue circle AOE will be placed in the middle of the platform and when it goes off, a bunch of water sprites will spawn in. Kill everything and proceed down the newly formed ramp on the other side of the platform. First boss time. The tank buster is a big straight line AOE so don't stand with the tank. Electric swipe is a conal AOE behind the boss that will give you the debuff of paralysis if you get hit by it. Body slam is a targeted circular AOE on a random player in the arena, but the first time it happens, it will always be the furthest player away. The boss will slam itself down on this AOE after a few seconds, so just get out of it to avoid it. Immersion will spawn blue watery orbs above random players. After a few seconds, the boss will perform a room-wide AOE, and the water orbs will fall onto the arena and create small circular AOEs where they fall. If you stand in this blue AOE, it will inflict a sooner-able dropsy debuff. When the boss finishes casting Symbiosis, it will become untargetable and summon three sharks into the fight. While the sharks are alive, the boss will move to one side of the arena and mark a random player with a large green icon above their head. This player will need to move away from the rest of the group as the boss will follow this player, dropping medium-sized AOEs as a trap. If anyone gets hit by these AoEs, it is a massive knockback. When the sharks have been defeated, the boss will perform another body slam and become targetable again, but this time it will also do an additional action when it slams on the ground. It can either do Electric Horror, which is a giant donut AoE with the only safe spot being inside the hitbox underneath the boss and will give you the debuff of Electrocution if you get hit by it, or it will do Expulsion, which is a medium-sized point-blank AoE that will give you a huge knockback and the Windburn debuff if you get hit by it. When you get the boss below approximately 30% health, it will become untargetable, move to middle of the room and stun everyone in the raid. It will then drag one party into the middle and push everyone else out of the center. Four Hydrospheres on the outside and one Hydra Core in the middle will spawn in. Everyone in the middle will be inflicted with a stacking Dropsy debuff. Spheres on the outside don't have a lot of health, but they are tethered to the one in the middle, which will have a stack of Vuln down for every sphere tethered to it. Everyone on the outside can burn the spheres down to help the party in the middle break free of theirs a lot sooner. After all the spheres have been defeated, the boss will release the party in the middle of the room and that party's Dropsy debuff will be cleansed. From here, the boss will repeat mechanics until it's defeated. Head up the ramp into the next room. It is recommended that you separate into your alliance groups. Kill the worms and moths in the area. After a short time, a Pagan's Knot and Pagan's Vine will spawn. In. Focus down the Pagan's Knot, as not destroying them means they will explode and cover the area in a poison cloud. To cure the area of the poison cloud, someone from each alliance will need to stand on the raised circles in each section to activate the fan in the middle of the area. There will be three additional mobiles that will spawn in, one for each alliance. Once all three mobiles have been defeated, the path will open for you to continue the raid. After you follow the path and get transported to the next area, you'll see a Sawtooth with its tail tethered to a immense soul in the middle of the room. Both bosses will need to be tanked. Much like the final boss of the Ether Chemical Research Facility, these two share their health pools. When one gets much lower than the other, the one with the larger health pool will give some of its own health to the other to balance their health pools accordingly. White Breath is a large cone in front of the Sawtooth. After a short time, there'll be a shielding dome effect on both bosses. This will create individual invulnerabilities to certain roles. You will notice one boss will be resistant to range attacks and the other will be resistant to magical attacks. Take note of which one has an invulnerability to your role as you won't be doing any damage if you're attacking the wrong one. Melees are completely fine for this mechanic as this only affects the magical and ranged classes. Random players will be targeted with large green circle AoEs with rotating slime orbs floating above their heads. Everyone will need to spread out and get away from these targeted players as if you are caught in the slime circle, you'll be tethered to the closest players and be inflicted with seized, which means you'll be unable to move or perform actions. Other players will need to run through every tether that is connected to you, which will release you from being seized. The Sawtooth will cast Mucus Spray, which is the same thing as the slime orbs the players had before, except this time it is a donut around the Sawtooth. If players are hit, just run through the tethers to break them and release your fellow alliance members. A few insects will spawn into the fight. After a short time, the Sawtooth will bury its head in the ground and liquefy the dirt, causing it to bubble underneath the insects. If the insects are dead, the bubbles will occur below random players. After a few seconds, the heads of the Sawtooth will shoot out and eat the insects or any players that are in the bubbling grounded area. Anything he eats will not only cause a mint salt to get bigger, but will also fill this bar. If this bar fills, the fight will enrage and you will wipe. If a player is eaten by the Sawtooth, they will pop out of the ground a short time later with a parasite attached to their head. For 15 seconds, these players will not have control of their characters and will walk around attacking alliance members with small conal AoEs. If anyone gets hit by these small AoEs, they will also have a parasite infected on them as well. So it's best to avoid these players while they have the parasite. A mint salt will cast a purple AoE around itself called Pulse of the Void. If you are hit by this, it is just a poison debuff which can be assumed. When a Minsol gets a huge shield of vines around itself, it will become invulnerable and the Sawtooth will start casting Shockwave Stomp. The Sawtooth will continue to be able to be attacked, but you'll need to be careful as you will need to eventually break away and position yourself behind the shield and within the line of sight of the Sawtooth. If you don't do this, you will instantly die when the cast finishes. After the damage goes out, the shield will drop and you'll be able to continue damaging the boss. Mechanics will repeat until both bosses have been defeated. Exit out of the arena and run to the next teleporter which will launch you to the next arena. As you run forward into the middle of the arena, Diabolus will run away. He 
will summon four enemies, a Black Guard and three Hellhounds. The Black Guard is untargetable at this moment. Kill the Hounds. The Black Guard will periodically cast Void Trap. This will leave a red and purple AoE on the ground which will give you a bleeding debuff as long as you're standing in it. After all three Hounds have been defeated, the Black Guard will become targetable. Gargoyles will spawn around the outside of the arena and cast narrow straight line AoEs through random party members before moving into the middle to join the fight. Kill everything. Walk across the teleporters to get to the next area. When this boss is pulled, it will constantly create an unassumable stacking bleeding debuff on all players. The boss will turn to one random player and cast Corrosive Bile. This is a prolonged conal attack that will inflict stacks of poison with every second that you're in this attack. The boss will spit into the air and a random alliance player will be targeted with a medium sized AoE. This AoE will linger on the ground for a while and it will cause an assumable poison debuff if you run through it. The boss will move to the middle of the room and raise his tentacles into the air. The tentacles will slam into the ground in straight line AoEs in diagonal directions from wherever he is facing. If you get hit by this, it will give you a huge knockback and an assumable concussion debuff. To avoid being hit by this, just stand directly on its sides or its front and back to dodge the attack. Idol of Impurity will spawn four towers on the edge of the arena. As long as these idols are standing, they will increase the bleeding stack for everyone by one per idol. When you defeat an idol, it will reduce your bleeding stack. The boss will move to the middle of the room and cast Void Pact. Void portals will appear on the four slightly raised platforms around the arena. Ads will spawn out of these portals called Fubar. If the Fubars get too close to the boss, the boss will eat them and get a damage up. The boss will turn to one of the Fubars and cast Beckon, which is a conal AoE towards the ad. It will vacuum up everything caught in the AoE and bring it within melee range of the boss. Burst down whichever ad gets targeted to avoid the boss getting a damage up. Another set of Fubars will spawn in and after they've all been defeated, the boss will cast Pestilence. This is a hard hitting room wide and if any Fubars have been eaten, it will hit for a lot more than you're anticipating. When the boss casts the move Black Lung, eight orange wispy orbs will spawn in around the edge of the arena. Players will have to run through the orbs to eliminate them, which will burst in a medium sized AoE. If they are left alone, they can explode and give everyone bind out of the action and also inflict magic vulnerability up, potentially wiping the raid. The boss will repeat mechanics until it's defeated. Take the teleporters into the final arena. Final boss time. Sickle Strike is a tank buster. Sickle Slash are two large straight line AoEs on either side of the boss with a straight line safe zone in the middle. Abyssal Reaper is a large point blank circular AoE from the boss, which will give you a small knockback and a Vuln stack if you get hit by it. The boss will then disappear from the arena and give one player in the alliance a large stack marker. Everyone will need to stack up to soak the damage. The boss will perform Sickle Slash or Abyssal Reaper straight after this. There is a small untelegraphed AoE around the boss called Nemesis Burst, which is also a small knockback. The boss will become untargetable and crumble itself into three pieces. Each piece of the boss will then become targetable. The tanks in each alliance must grab them and separate them as they will tether together and get a vulnerability down if they're too close. The Cobras will perform Serpentine Strike, which is a small AoE that inflicts an assumable magic vulnerability up. When all three ads have been defeated, the boss will return to normal with a room-wide AoE. The boss will also get a giant red eye on its and cast Petrifaction. You must turn your character to look away from the boss. If you do not, you will become petrified and be unable to do anything with your character for several seconds. Towards the end of the fight, the boss will summon Blood Guards. They don't offer much of a threat. When the boss disappears for a second time, it will put down a number of circular AoEs on the arena, leaving a couple of safe zones on the outside, which are easy to get to. From here, the boss will repeat mechanics until it's defeated. Congratulations, you have completed the Void Arc. My name is The Scrub. Thank you for watching.